cocktail history with the Freeborn County Historical Museum Library and Village. I'm Stephanie Kibler, Executive Director here at the museum, along with Risha Lilienthal, who's Halloweened out. All day I've been looking at her orange. <laughs> uh, she's in charge of collections and exhibits. And we're joined by just a few of our friends that we get to see every day here. Um, I don't even know what you call the gal who, who started us off today. But, um, this little lovely. Is that a tin head? It is a yep, tin head. She has a lot um, of paint lift. Her eyes are like, ooh. And she has a friend who I'm, this, these, are, these were on exhibit today. Yep. And I, I'm a little baffled as to why he was on exhibit. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, he's, he's, he's um, in such rough shape. He's, really he's lost his arms. Yep. Um, and his feet have fallen out. But his shoes are hanging on. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a hole in his head, so he's not going to go back out. No. Um, I think that's a 1930s tin head kind of thing. Most of these are 1930s, actually. And, and, and you can understand why she's chipped. I mean, a tin yeah. headed doll would chip mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. um, the one we didn't pull out and I thought of was our wax doll. We have a beautiful oh, wax do. doll, but she, she does is. have some creep factor too. She does, and she's also kind of hard to manage. Yeah, she's, without, she's, like, she, yeah. she's good she's sized. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the Bloody Mary and creepy dolls, um, which is interesting because as I was reading, you know, kind of Google what makes a doll creepy because you know, oh, there's mm -hmm. certain dolls you walk and you see them and you're like, Ew. Well, as I was looking on this, and I didn't print out my little sheet on that, they were talking about these phobias that people have with dolls. And one of the reasons dolls are creepy is because we are, um, oh, here I did. It's pediophobia. Oh, yeah. A fear of dolls. Um, that's, that's the proper name for fear of dolls. Uh, and then there's also a fear of puppets, oh. which is <laughs> puppophobia. Oh no. Hello, everybody. Um, I don't know if you can the see. It's fun, like all the, the way around. It's, yeah, she's, and it's stuck there. Um, and then this was the other <gasps> one that kind of struck me. As a little ew. <laughs> I know how to get rich out of my office. Um, and the puppets we have are from a collection from um, oh, the what? story lady. Oh, that from Mr. Um, Grotenhus. Grotenhus. Grotenhus, mm -hmm. who we've talked about mm -hmm. previously. Lovely love story in there. Very nice. Yep. Little, yeah, very sweet. Very sweet couple that, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I just thought that was interesting that there was also a puppet phobia. Yeah. But we are, uh, we tend to get freaked out by these dolls because we are wired to connect with a human face. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the more human a doll looks, the creepier right. they are. Mm -hmm. Like I'm looking at Miss Brown Eyes over there, whose eyes are kind of, oh, yeah. They like have no pupils. She's a little, oof. And of course, then what you've got next to her there, he's um, <laughs> Fan Lee, F A N L E E doll, which has four heads that you can interchange the head. And and they had and each and they had different costumes yes, they with do different yeah. outfits that go with so them. So put a head on there so people can see. Oh, she says ooh. So so yeah, so you could you could switch the heads out and dress them however you wanted to. They're they're kind of creepy. Um, oh, his hat fell off. I think uh, I'm just gonna. I don't know if they can see this one very clearly, but um, this little guy here, I just don't even know what to say. And I, we didn't have anything Any interpretation. With no, him. so we're gonna dig into what he, hot mess this he's guy. Got these eyebrows. Yes, and a really weird smile. <laughs> Anyway, um, this one's here because I, 
I've named this doll and I'm not gonna mm -hmm. use the name. Mm -hmm. This doll reminds me of a coworker I had. Well, she looks like an old lady instead of a baby. Yes, she's got, like, that's the button going Yes, on. yes, it's very, she's, so when I walk into that room and see her every time, <laughs> she's like a jolt for me. And then the two, oh, ugh, they just stand and if you're coming oh around a corner flipping a light on and it's dark, they look like they've taken a step. Exactly. I'm like, I feel like they move. I know. I know. Ugh. I think they do. And I, and part of the reason they freak me out, they have little girl shoes on. They do have actual child's yes. clothing shoes. And shoes, yeah. yeah. So, I uh, they're, they're, but anyway, <laughs> we can talk more on creepy right. dolls. Well, and another reason why they are, like, so creepy to us is the, like, uncanny valley thing where, like you said, mm -hmm. they're so close to mm -hmm. human, but they're a shell of a human. They're, like, yes. devoid of emotion. Yes. Yeah. Or they're stuck in an emotion that doesn't, like, proceed through. Right. Or, or, it's, or it's not an emotion you're identifying with at the yeah. time. Yes. Yeah, I swear these two get up and walk around. There we go. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, a shocker. Here's a shocker. Cocktail. This, the Bloody Mary, has controversial beginnings. Oh, what? I know it's crazy, right? Um, I liked this line. Its origin myths are as murky as the tomato juice it's made with. Um, I didn't know tomato juice was murky. Oh, murky. Oh, murky. my gosh. I'm sitting here going, the origin of tomato juice is murky, too, but the actual It's been drink. a long day, folks. Um, but most cocktail historians agree that bartender Fernand Pete Petiot, Petiot, P-E-T-I-O-T. I'm assuming it's a Pete because they call him Pete. I'm assuming it's Petiot. Which way? Petoit. 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 I don't know. Um, in the 1920s, came up with this at the famed, you'll never guess it, Harry's New York Bar in Paris. Mm -hmm. A lot of good All beverages. Of so after Prohibition, he came back um, to Manhattan, and he was the manager of the King Cole Bar at the St. Regis Hotel. Um, and he brought the Bloody Mary to the bar. Uh, for a time, it's believed it was called the Red Snapper and was later labeled the Bloody Mary after Queen Mary Tudor mm -hmm. uh, and her bloody reign against Protestants in England mm -hmm. in the 1500s. And um, so it's, it's thought that the tomato juice represents the bloodshed during the time and the fiery vodka illustrates Queen Mary's wicked means of executing her enemies. Oh. Right? Ooh, talk about a creepy doll. Right? Uh -huh. An ad in the 1930s, however, claimed the drink was named after a friend of entertainer who was also, he was a comedian, George Jessel, and her name was Mary Garrity. But most feel... Um, yeah, Mary it, Tudor. Yeah, 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 and it has to do with... Well, that's the whole, like... Anyway, it is considered one of the healthiest cocktails. Vegetables. Uh, vegetables, low in calories, and it packs a punch. Um, but it's not as spirit heavy, mm -hmm. as alcohol heavy as most cocktails are. Yeah. Uh, and there's a wide range of things people do. Like, have you seen the outrageous ones that come with like the cheeseburger and a chicken drummy? And you've not seen that? I want that now. Well, it. I have yet to find one where I'm like, this yes, there's good. a great cheeseburger on top of my Bloody Mary. Mm. Uh, you can get one up at Target Field for Twins game. I actually lucked out one day because I'd ordered the brat one and he made me a cheeseburger and he put a brat and a cheeseburger on my nice. Bloody Mary. Nice. Yeah. But it was, I was hyped up that it was going to be, oh. And I guess it, it was too hyped. Too hyped, maybe. Yeah. Um, just something to note: it is not an evening drink. It's a morning drink. It's a morning drink. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> those who consume it after the sun has set 
possess personality defects and are to be avoided. I, I, I let's start. <laughs> I just don't understand why that would be, but oh my God. Um, it is also one of the most wide, widely known cocktails oh. across the, the universe. Across the, the universe. World. The universe. It is Halloween, <laughs> um, and people either love it or hate it. There's like no. Uh, I can do a Bloody Mary, it's okay. It's like, ugh, or mmm. Thought that was interesting. So let's let's mix. I'm a little nervous here. I, I'm gonna confess, we don't have any ice, which, so, but we do have ice cold gray goose. Yeah, the vodka has been in the freezer. This. So that is our ice. Yes. Um, so, huh? Oh. Oh, she's gonna pop the cork. This is her. I can get it. Do you want help? No. Your lipstick is freaking me out. <laughs> she has black lipstick on. I don't know if anybody can tell. see that. We're almost there, guys. It's gonna go. That was good. <laughs> so it's two <laughs> ounces of vodka. So that's two in each? Yep. Okay. And four. <gasps> and four ounces of tomato juice. Now, I prefer Zing Zang, yeah. but we're using the Tabasco, which yeah, can't, it can't, can't be bad, bad right? right. Um, the um, recipe calls for Tabasco sauce, which I never put into my Mary, because my Bloody Mary mix I buy is usually a spicy one. Oh, sure. So I'm gonna assume the Tabasco <laughs> Bloody Mary is a spicy one. Um, I'm also deviating a little bit, yeah. How much? Four ounces each. Oh, that um, it asks for fresh lemon juice. I like a fresh squeeze of lime in mine. So I- I tend to like lime better too. Yeah, so if we grab that. Um, otherwise, we're pretty close to being on target with, with our supplies. So. Why do we have shrimp? Well, then we're gonna get there. Oh, okay. Just don't don't rush the process. Sorry. I just really love shrimp. Um. So there's then our next step will be. Are you counting when I mess up your count? No, you're good. Our next step will be three ounces of, or three ounces, <laughs> three dashes of Worcestershire, not three ounces. Yeah, wow, that might that be a would bit much. Be a lot, wouldn't it? Yeah, so then three dashes of Worcestershire. Oh my gosh, what's a dash? Is it like a one, Whoa. two, three? That's cool. that's good. Um, and then uh, for those of you who like a like a little bite, um, it's a, like a quarter tablespoon of, of horseradish. Oh, so I do about like that. Do it, and then. Takes a while to mix it in. Oh shoot! I should have done both of those. Well, we're gonna we're gonna double just dip double dip there. Okay. Just okay. stir that. Um, now you can do celery bitters, which I had at home, but I didn't bring, or um, two to three dashes of celery salt. Oh, okay. And I usually do two. I like a little celery salt in there. It also says you can add salt and pepper, which I've never done. Um, I, again, it has to do with your mix. Okay, two um, dashes? Two dashes. I'm gonna get a spoon here, sorry folks. Um, so here's a squeeze of lime in each. Oh, jeez! <laughs> no. We're haunted. <laughs> oh no, it's because we have the dolls. Um, and you can garnish any way you'd like. So, Ooh. a little celery is always nice. Some people like green beans. Some people like Ooh. Um, asparagus. I like olives. I like a shrimp. Or you can just put a whole cheeseburger on there. Just <laughs> find a little stir quick there too, please. And really, uh, and then you should have some ice. <laughs> right. But it is what it is. Um, I'm trying 
trying to think what else people put. Some people do cheese or beef stick, mm -hmm. which is nice. I do cheese kind of like a nice good. cheese and beef stick mm -hmm. little appetizer sampler kind of thing. Um, but that basically is it. Good. You can um, pretty much do anything you want with a... Anything goes. Well, maybe not cupcakes or something. Oh, but I just knocked your shrimp in. That's all right. It'll pop back up. <laughs> so, uh, and this is your first one. This is which, my first Bloody Mary. Um, it smells good. I'm, it was it a little leery about the sauce or the mix. Mm. Oh, that's a good Bloody Mary. Mm. You Zing like Zang is better, but the Tabasco one works. You like chomp on this while you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you just have your little smorgasbord. You eat your shrimp, you... Chomp on your celery, have your all right. olive. All right. I don't know why they think this is not an evening drink. Right? It's a good snacky. Right? You would think it'd be a perfect happy hour drink. Yeah. All right. You got anything else? Well, just that I want to give a shout out to the Olmstead County Historical yes. Society. Uh, they, I believe it was 2019, did their creepy doll contest um, which was great and uh, it's been fun watching what they've done again this year in 2021 and they added a creepy doll cocktail party yeah which is really fun um I, I this is one of the things I think that they had on their thing dolls with sleepy eyes with staring glass eyes dolls with porcelain faces with true to life painted rag doll faces with mops of real hair atop their heads with no hair at all 150 year old Victorian dolls, rare dolls with uh -oh, wax faces, dolls with cheery con countenance, countenances, dolls with stern expressions, sweet dolls and vaguely sinister dolls. <laughs> um, sinister. So yeah, they, it's just been a really fun thing to follow yeah, on social media. I couldn't, I couldn't go to the cocktail party because I had a commitment already, but I, uh, I'm hoping next year. Yeah. Take a hike over to Olmstead right. and check it out. So anyway, I just want to say great job Yay. on the creepy doll contest because it, yes. it was inspiring. That's awesome. Okay. So I have a few options for you to choose from because I don't know if we can get to all of them, but because Bloody Mary I looked up Mary in our History of Freeborn County book. Mm. If you look up that name, you get 261 hits. Really? There's a lot of Marys. And oh. if you go through, there's a lot of them that have like firsts or random things about them that like connect to the origin of like Freeborn County and the towns within. So we could talk about Marys. We could talk about blood because I have two things connected to blood, which are a little bit more gruesome. Um... Or we can talk about um, a ghost story, which doesn't have anything to do with dolls, but it's kind of spooky. That is, uh, it was an article written in 2020, so it's like modern, but it's talking about a ghost in Albert Lee. Um, mm. Or we have um, a new doll that came in. We've got the little creep factor, and I can talk about her. Her name is Doris. I wish you guys could vote. Right? Um, if there's something that we don't do, let us know and we'll hand out the information. But then the last thing is a uh, few tips on how to keep your dolls in good condition. Well, I vote no to that one. We can do that <laughs> anytime. I mean, the whole point of creepy dolls is they're really yeah, not. Yeah, right. They're not in good condition. Usually. So maybe we do a how to avoid a creepy doll. How to avoid a creepy doll? Well, like making it. How to avoid making it a creepy doll. Yes. That's how to care for so did any one of those? She's hit? even creepy from behind. I know it's it's terrible. Um, I'm curious about the blood. You just threw out blood in it. Okay. Okay. All right, let's go. So, blood. I have one that's connected to death. All right. It happens with blood sometimes. Yeah, it does. R. M. Palmer, located in Albert Lee in the late 70s, 1870s. Um, and was one of the recognized and promising attorneys of this section of the country and commanded a large and lucrative practice and had every promise of a successful career when he was accidentally shot in 1883 
by a companion while dunk hunting. Dunk. <laughs> duck hunting. Those pesky dunks. <laughs> duck hunting at Bear Lake and died from loss of blood before medical oh, aid was terrible. obtained. And then here's another one, which this one is just gross. So I, I'm going to give you a little bit of fair warning here. It's gross. Okay. For 10 years after the first settlement, our lakes fairly teemed with many kinds of fish, such as pickerel, sucker, musselange. Musselange? Musselange? I don't know. Oh, no, is that a that musky? Is. I don't know. Bass hmm. and many smaller varieties, but little used by the settler. There really? Was, yeah. There was no market for them, but all had what they could consume for family use. One night in 1860, they were so plentiful at Albert Lee, they crowded into the turbine wheel of Rubel's Mill oh dear. and put the mill out of commission until morning. Hundreds were ground to death, and the waste away was virtually a river of blood. Chum. Yep. Gross. I, I was expecting way worse. <laughs> Disgusting. No. I bet it was really gross looking, and Ooh, I bet it the stung. Nile. Yes. Nile. Oh, man, we're just going to skip right past that. All right, you must have something else. That uh, was all okay. one. How about the, how about the paranormal experiences? Ooh. Okay, so we've got one in 2020. It's um, a mm -hmm. Albert Lee Tribune article, and it's about the Marion Ross Theater. Mm -hmm. Every good theater has a ghost. Uh, every good theater has a ghost. Every good building has a ghost. I mean, that's true. That's true. Hence and the movement of creepy dolls. I will say that I am fairly certain that I have experienced this ghost. <laughs> um, but, so, many places and buildings in Freeborn <laughs> County area have storied histories, as we know, and spooky stories passed down from place to place, but few have first-hand accounts as many first-hand accounts as the Marion Ross Performing Arts Center. Um, uh, there's a lot of people who say it's haunted. And I've actually people. had people tell me that, that, yes. that there is a ghost. And mm. it's served, that building itself has served a lot of different purposes throughout the past. It's been an opera house, a fire station, a teen center, a Masonic lodge, mm -hmm. which still Masons still do meet there. Um, and perhaps one of the most interesting things is it was a temporary hospital during the flu epidemic in the 1920s. Oh, interesting. And um, according to Doc... Does the ghost tie to that? Yes. Yes, because um, a 26-year-old woman named Minnie Gregson passed away in that building from complications with the flu. Oh. She left behind a husband and a two-year-old daughter. And this is where people say she never left the building. Hmm. So, how sad is that? Isn't that sad that you have to roam that building through through all of its changes? It's kind of exciting. But maybe also, she just visits it. Maybe. Um, but Rory hmm. Matson is a person who is currently on the board at the theater, and he directs several plays. He's been doing it for. Like, I think his number is like 70 or 80 plays. Well-known community yes, member. Well-known. Um, he said the theater is in fact haunted. When we moved the Performing Arts Center into that building and had the remodel done, several people told us that, theoretically, the building was haunted. And everybody laughed about it, he said. And then he started to kind of have these little things happen. So sometimes working on technology... Uh, he was working late at night and the lights for a show um, for the next day and he had his first encounter and So it's like the lights are something that the ghost kind of plays with a little bit uh, More than a couple of people have claimed to see a, wo a woman moving through the mirrors in the basement and that I'm pretty sure I've seen a glimpse in the mirror in the uh, Trying not to roll my eyes I know. in the uh, woman's dressing room <clears throat> Um, and Matson said he kept feeling stuff on his neck, like somebody was breathing on it. Um, up on a ladder, 20 feet above the floor, nobody could be breathing on his neck. Um, it's called an air conditioning vent. <laughs> no! 
And when he told the story to mm -hmm. Marna Warner, who was a director and had been there for some time, she said, oh, that's her, the building's haunted. <laughs> And since then, he said he never enters the building. Whenever he enters the building alone, he says, hello, remember me? Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, and then he said he doesn't have any problems when he does that. But he said that can't be said for some of the performers that um, he's had come through. Uh, he's recalled one young mm -hmm. actress who was performing in one of his plays. Every time she walked into the women's dressing room, the lights would shut off. And it happened not just once, but every day for six consecutive days. And he said he told her to go upstairs and apologize for using the dressing room. And, and then the lights oh, didn't shut off. Funny. Yeah. And he said more than a couple of people have seen a woman moving through the mirrors again. And um, maybe the dressing room was the hospital room she died in. Maybe. I mean, it's little, and I could see that being like an area where you could close people off. Um, but. Um, and the lights on the stairways of the theater have shut off by people and um, two women have had that happen to them and both were separated by more than three uh, four years where that happened uh, so I think it's interesting because people always assume a ghost is a is a haunting or a bad right personally I think I think people's spirits hang with us. Like the and energies? I, yes. And I will say this only because my mom died 35 years ago. Mm. This month, actually. And um, she was only 60. And I can walk into a room at times and I can smell my mother. Mm. It's, it's, it's like I walked right through her. Wow. So... And maybe that's a subliminal thing. I don't know. I But I feel like there are... I don't think that they're scary, evil spirits that are, you know... I think she's maybe just hanging out and checking in on people. And then she goes about her business. True. I don't know. I'm open to a lot of different ideas about it. I haven't quite solidified what I like actually think about it yet. Um... But this one, in that in the theater, she has pushed little girls before. Like down a flight of stairs no, or just out of the way? just kind of out of the way, I think. Just kind of like, well, and I'm wondering, because it's girls, little girls, she had that two-year-old that she left behind. Move it, move it, move it. So, I don't, yeah. Maybe they're in the know. way. Get out of the way. Right? I don't know. Hmm. So, there's a new show, I think it's on CBS, that mm -hmm. this, this couple moves into a mansion that's haunted. It's yeah. got like a dozen ghosts living in it. Oh, I've only seen it once, um, but they're, they're, the wife can see them. She hit her head, and now she can see them, and the oh husband my. can. And uh, so the ghosts talk with her mm -hmm. and, like, tattle on the husband. And So she's like, oh, Halloween, trick-or-treating. You must love Halloween. And they're all like, no. no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think there's a guy who's got an arrow through his neck. The Boy Scout troop leader, so he's in his Boy Scout uniform. Um, there's a, an indigenous person. There's a, um, um, oh, gosh, she's got like the 1920s the the flapper, girl? flapper dress on. Um, but I think she might have been a blues singer. Mm. Um, there's somebody from Victorian age. Mm. It's actually, it's really kind of a quirky show. So when That's you're fun. talking about that, I'm thinking... They all have different personalities. So maybe that's what the thing that they just have a ghost with them. Mm -hmm. We did a um, we did a ghost tour when we were in Savannah. And I'm not huge on doing those kinds of tours. Mm -hmm. um, except that it had a lot of history to it. They oh, talked cool. a lot yeah, about that's really history about some of the mansions and, and um, one was a Civil War hospital and, and then they backed it up with when they did some renovating. They this is a little gross too. They actually found a variety of um, arm bones and leg bones. And it was from the amputations that were happening in Savannah due to the, the Civil War. Yeah. Um, but they just found bones in the house? No, this was in the hospital. Oh. So, but it would be like they'd find, you know, one arm bone, one leg bone. Just hanging out? They didn't of, like bury them? They did, but they were renovating, excavating. Oh. And so, um, and they talked a little bit then about, you know, people hearing things, weird things, sure. and, 
and seeing strange things in mirrors and that kind of thing. And I think, you know, I, th I think if you have unfinished business, maybe, or if you're just checking in on your loved one, yo, how you doing? I feel like that's a valid. Well, I think people come in dreams too sometimes like that. I too. agree. Mm -hmm. I had such bizarre dreams the other night. We aren't even going to go there, <laughs> folks. I dreamt I was a, I wasn't, I was a, not a teenager. I was, I was 58 and behaving like a teenager. And my niece, who's also 58, we actually ended up moving in with my older sister, who's 20 years older than I am. And we were behaving like teenagers. So she was trying to discipline us. Oh my God. <laughs> we weren't even going to go there. It was a bizarre <laughs> dream. So maybe that was, I don't know, some <sighs> ghost in my head. Oh, shoot. Way, way off topic. Hi. Anyway, we have a fabulous collection of dolls. We do. Um, I don't know that any of these are quite as creepy as what Olmstead Coney has. Oh, sure. Um, well, maybe that one. Or maybe that one. That's <laughs> creepy. Uh -huh. But um, a lot of dolls on display because we did take in the collection from um, the Story Lady Doll Museum. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we do have a, a wide range. It's, sometimes it's right. mind-boggling. Well, and that museum opened in 1996 and then um, closed in 2010. And they accumulated um, over 1,500 dolls. Um, yeah, and, it, and it's like if, if it was a doll, yeah, they, it was. It, it was it. so. Um, we have dolls from. Uh, I'm gonna just, just guess almost every ethnicity. Sure. Um, we have dolls from as early as. Do we have any from the 1800s? Yes. To, to about 10 years ago. Um, all different conditions, yep. all different shapes and sizes. Um, it is. It's interesting to walk through. Uh, but it is a little creepy. Oh, I didn't mention this one. So this was with our Dolls from Ireland collection. Oh my gosh. I think her face is a nut. Oh, totally. But she's a little, totally she's a little Irish witch nut-faced. She's a nut-faced witch. She's just interesting. And so we brought her out. So we, I mean, I'm telling you the whole gamut. It's handmade. Yep. High end store bought, mass produced. Yeah. Yep. Um, favorite favorite brand of doll? F and B. F and B. More on that later, folks. Right. 